Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Many movies begin or end with a quote from an especially wise human being, but as far as I know, The Tree of Life is the only film that begins with a quote from God, the source of wisdom itself, and it is that line from Job that serves as the foundation of the entire film. There are a few questions about life more debated than, what is the source of the evil around us? And Malik actually first asked this question in the thin red line, if there is no God, there is no evil, there is no good, we're just very intelligent animals who roam around earth for a handful of years, and then we fade into history like we never existed. How you deal with that truth is up to you, I discuss one perspective in my collateral analysis. If God does exist, the question becomes much more complicated. Why would a good and just God allow evil to exist? Or at least some forms of it? Why do children die of cancer? Why have millions of people been tortured to death throughout the course of history? The only substantial discussion we get in the Bible focusing on this question comes in the book of Job, which again, Malik quotes to start the film. And God basically tells Job, Who are you to doubt my intentions or designs? Who are you to say what I should or should not allow? In many ways, it is not a satisfying response. But in my opinion, it's the only response that really makes sense. Whatever your opinion is on that passage, it's not one that you would expect anyone to ever build a film around. But that did not stop Terrence Malick from trying, and the final result is nothing short of staggering. It is impossible to know the intention behind every scene in The Tree of Life. It's a very personal story, but there is a fundamental contrast to the movie that Malick goes a long way to display, and it's that contrast I want to discuss because it connects directly to what God tells Job when Job demands an answer to life's most difficult question. I also want to take a quick moment to address the little flowing light that we see at the beginning and the end of the film. My personal opinion is that this imagery strings from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I believe the light we see in the tree of life is truth, or the word. The word that becomes flesh in Christ. The darkness surrounds the light in the film, but it never goes out. And since the rest of the story tries to give us God's perspective on things, I think Malik wanted to begin the film by showing the essence of God, which is truth and light. And Malik is trying to display a drop of his essence through this film. The Tree of Life received quite a bit of criticism when it was first released. Many people walked out of the film when it came out. In fact, some American theaters actually put up signs to warn the audience about its non-conventional plot, although I suspect those signs had the opposite effect. Even Sean Penn himself said he didn't understand why his character was even in the movie and that the final film did not live up to the power of the script, although his bitterness may come from the fact that Malik cut a large portion of his character out of the movie. Anyone who's seen The Tree of Life knows where the mixed feelings come from. It was destined to become labeled as pretentious because who in their right mind would mold together a family drama and a BBC documentary about the universe? And I was prepared to agree with this sentiment before seeing the movie because I really, really do not like style over substance films, but that is not what The Tree of Life is. If The Tree of Life was just about the O'Brien family and did not include the grand imagery of the universe, then I think the pretentious label would be more appropriate, because the broader message of the film would be much more difficult to pin down. So the question is, what is the broader message? What is the contrast that I mentioned earlier? I'm sure most of you at some point have heard the following idea. Don't be afraid to take chances, get over the things that go wrong in your life, because we're just little specks in a universe too large to comprehend. It's a comforting idea to some extent. It's not helpful to take life too seriously, it's not helpful to be scared stiff of putting yourself out there, and accepting that idea could remedy that problem. But the Tree of Life takes a different angle on that idea. Early in the movie, we're shown a montage of the small moments in the life of a little family in Waco, Texas. We see a young couple fall in love. It's one of the more beautiful sequences in film history. We see the birth of their first child. We see the child's first steps. We see the mother allow a butterfly to land on her hand. We get to see the family be happy and optimistic, but as time goes on, more somber emotions enter the picture. The laughter starts to be balanced out by tears and anger. In all of these moments, happy and sad, they seem to have an extra weight to them that we don't get in other small family dramas. It's almost like we're watching the birth of a myth. 
And constantly throughout the film, members of the O'Brien family are asking questions of God. The mother demands answers for the death of her child. After Jack watches a boy drown, he asks God, Why should I be good if you aren't? And the most powerful question in the movie, in my opinion, is when Mrs. O'Brien asks God, Who are we to you? Now, how do any of these questions and the tragedy endured by the O'Briens connect to the universe sequence? I believe Malik is making a point about the true value of life. Instead of saying that humans are just floating around pointlessly in the infinite universe, he's instead saying that our lives are dancing alongside the eternal. We're in concert with it. And that connection is a consequence of a shared creator. Accepting that idea, that we're a part of the grand opera of life, and acting as if it's true, would mean taking the wisdom of Mrs. O'Brien when she says, Love every ray of light, and forgive. Mr. O'Brien, who's portrayed by Brad Pitt, decides to focus on the small world around him. He spends his whole life working hard in order to achieve status and financial success, but despite all of his best efforts, he falls short. He acts as if he's dancing alone, to use my previous analogy. And when he finally realizes how this way of living has affected his life, we get the following piece of dialogue. Look, the glory around us. Trees and birds. I lived in shame. I dishonored it all and didn't notice the glory. When Jack grows up, the lives of his mother and father are wrestling inside his mind. And towards the end of his childhood story, he tells his father that, I'm more a you than her. And that statement would appear to be true, given how his life turns out. Jack actually achieves his father's desires. He acquires an immensely successful career, but there seems to be something absent in his life. He's so fixated on the small moments that he shared with his brother that he's incapable of doing the job he spent decades trying to reach. As I mentioned, a lot of footage featuring the older Jack was removed from the theatrical cut. I really wish I could have seen more. But it appears that over the years, Jack has been cut off from the transcendent aspects of life. He's basically turned into a sort of corporate zombie, just going through the motions every day, and perhaps this is a result of anger towards God for the death of his younger brother. But on the anniversary of his brother's death, he receives a vision, a reconnection with the transcendent. And I believe this final sequence is somewhat of an answer to the question that opens the film. The world inside Jack's vision is a very strange one. There are many mysterious aspects about it, but one thing is definitely true. The world is outside of time. Jack sees his younger self, his younger brother, and Malik makes an effort to show age fluctuating in the sequence. The hand-kissing moment is probably the most notable. There is only one being that could exist out of time, and that would be God. Because if God created time, he sure as hell would not be bound by it. So through the view of God, Julius Caesar at this moment is being assassinated. Washington is crossing the Delaware. You are being born, and you are taking your final breaths. C.S. Lewis spent a lot of time trying to explain this point, although it's almost impossible to wrap your head around, but it would have to be true if God exists. Jack is shown a world through this lens, and it's a joyful world. The dead son is united with his mother, tears of joy are shed. There's a lightness to the world Jack steps into. It looks like a place where your soul could fly. And it reminds me a lot of Dante's Purgatorio, because in the Purgatorio, the higher Dante goes up Mount Purgatory, the lighter he becomes, free from the weight of sin. You feel that sense in this particular scene. When the vision comes to a conclusion, a weight is lifted off of Jack's shoulders, like the questions that have been busying his mind have finally left. And in regards to the injustice of the world, I think Malik is simply showing us the words written in Job. If we were to truly see God or feel his presence, or even understand 0.1% of how he sees the universe, we would totally forget whether or not he is quote-unquote just or not. God is justice. God is peace. And allowing him to guide our lives is the way to freedom. And Jack says exactly this during the film. Guide us. If there is no God, then the world truly is unjust. Mao murdered millions, but he lived until he was 82 years old. He had four wives, held complete and total power over an entire nation. 
the decent people that he murdered, they get no divine retribution. They are left in complete darkness with Mao, but during their lives, they weren't allowed to pursue happiness. But if there is a God, there will be justice, and that is one thing we can depend on. Jack's vision reinstills a belief that the horrible things that happen on Earth, they're just a minute part of an infinite story. A story overseen by a being Jack does not have the ability to understand, but a being he has the ability to trust in, and that trust gives him immense peace. You cannot aim higher than Malik did with the Tree of Life. It's literally impossible. A vast majority of filmmakers in Hollywood are either agnostic or atheist, and that does not restrict their ability to tell great stories, absolutely not, but they are limited to the material world. Malik's story soars above the material world in a way no other film ever has, and for that reason, I believe it to be the most ambitious film ever made. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe on your way out. The Tree of Life is not the easiest film to discuss, but I tried to articulate my thoughts as well as I could. I promise I'm more coherent in other videos, which you should watch after this. But thank you once again. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I will talk to you soon.